Okay, we got the sweet hum of these Danfoss scroll compressors going in the background. And what we're gonna do in this video is review the Elitech IR200 infrared and heated diode refrigerant leak detector. It's two sensors in one. We're gonna get this done right now, guys. Okay, so I've taken the cap off of this so you guys can see the filter inside. All right, there's a filter in there which filters out any debris from getting into the unit. There's spare filters in this little bag right here and this gets easily screwed back on just like that. Okay, um, an accessory that it comes with is very cool is a dual flashlight. It's a UV and LED light that sticks onto the gooseneck like that. And then you can turn the light on and it shines on the area that you're leak checking. I thought that's a very cool feature. Now this is a chargeable device, okay? It's not uh, battery powered, like you don't switch up batteries. You actually charge it up. And we have a USB-C charging cord and the cable right here. And then we also have a spare gooseneck just in case, right here. Curiosity got the best of me here. I took this little panel off because it had a, had a screw in it and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's under there. Obviously, batteries, lithium batteries can be removed and changed if needed, okay? We look at the back here. Here's the refrigerants that the detector is good for right here, okay? Now the sensitivity level, we can change that high, medium, low, and 4G slash A means four grams of refrigerant per annual basis. So on high, we can find leaks up to four grams annually, leak rate, okay? So that's pretty cool. And then we have the medium and low settings. It's all changed from the interface on the front of the detector. Okay guys, what I've done here is zoom in on the interface. This is the infrared interface, okay? Now we have that beep. The audible buzzer is on or the beeping is on. We can mute that very easily with the mute button right here. So that's gone. If we're working in a sensitive noise area, we can shut that right off. Our sensitivity is on low, as you can see right there. We wanna change that. All we gotta do is go to this reset slash sensitivity button. We can go to high, we can go to medium, and we can go back to low. Now what I found is in high, it's very, very sensitive and it needs to be kept out of the wind and stuff like that because it can go off. So if you're on high, be sure that you're not in a windy area or you have air blowing across it because it could actually set it off. Medium and low, I find it doesn't do that, just so you guys are aware, okay? The peak is off right now, but we can turn the peak on. Now what that does is if we have a leak and this rises to the top and then falls back when we move the detector away, the peak will show right here, right in this area here, if we turn it on. With the peak off, it won't show whatsoever. Okay, so continuing on, we're gonna change up the mode on this. This is in now heated diode mode. This is the heated diode interface. Here, the first thing that you wanna do here, guys, is you wanna take this out into the open air and hit the reset button. In heated diode mode, this is a reset button. In infrared mode, it's a sensitivity button. You wanna take it out into the open air and reset it. Now you have zero, zero, zero across here. When we, when we hit a leak, depending on the concentration, the number gets higher. This is an inherent value. It's not in PPM. So basically, if you hit a really high number, it's a really high leak. If you hit a really low number, it's a really low leak. And what you can do in this specific case is you can hit the peak button, okay? It's zero down here in section A because we're at zero. But let's say we hit a really big leak and we get up to about 900. We hit the peak there and it will log that 900 right there. And this is good for different locations of possibly you walk into a, uh, a mechanical room that has a rack system and you're walking by a location with a high peak, you can hit the peak button and save it there so you know what the peak was in that area as you walk by. I think there's some value in having that in the leak detector. So let's go see if we can find some leaks. Okay, so I've pulled the cap off of this valve core, okay? And the gooseneck is very flexible on this, so we can get it into strange places. So if I try to get this into here, that's not a problem. And let's see if we can register anything on this, which we are not at the moment. So that is actually not leaking. Okay, so I'm gonna take the cap off of this core right here. 
and we're going to check at this one. Now we got something there. Okay, we're getting something right there at that specific spot just for a split second. So we got something at that specific core and the value there was 153. When it got to its peak, as I was checking, I hit this peak button and it saved it right there. Okay, so same fitting and we have changed this over to the infrared mode. Sensitivity is on high and the peak is on. So let's see what kind of reading we get this time. So we're picking up a leak on this mode as well. And we can see that our sensitivity is on high and our peak has gone all the way up to the left hand side. And the actual measurement has dropped back down to zero. So we have verified on two different modes there is a leak at that core. So we're gonna have to replace it. All right guys, one thing worth mentioning is the dense foam on the bottom of the case. The soft foam on the top of the case gonna keep the tool well protected. Okay, we know how to mute this thing, we know how to use the peak, we've gone through both modes, okay, and we've seen a leak in the exact same spot. All right, just make sure when you go from infrared to heated diode that you hit this reset button in open air to reset that sensor back to zero because it's gonna help you with your readings going forward. But that's it, guys. This is the Elitech IR200. Happy HVACing.